Hey guys, I have decided to do Alice in Wonderland for our coloring page this week. I thought it would be fun to do something that automatically has a lot of color to it. And I recreated an image from the 1950 Disney film. Um, I, for one, wanted to try a different style. I was really curious if I could pull it off. And I think I did pretty well, so it's not something I would... Get out of here, kitty cat. It's not something I would normally do. Um, Disney is not necessarily my favorite thing in the world, but with the colors they used and the backgrounds and the patterns, I just thought that everybody would have a really good time coloring this. Um, this is already going to be available to basically download and color. It'll be on a link in the description. It'll take you to my art page where you can go ahead and download it, color it, just link it back up and tag me so I can see what you've done after. I'm mostly just curious to see what people come up with. It's always fun to get in a little creative community together. Um, I also want to mention that today I'm going to be doing something new. I'm going to be doing gouache, which is really scary because it is a mix of watercolor and acrylic. And I'm not sure the paper's gonna hold up too well. So before I start on the actual painting, I'm going to do some swatches on a separate sheet of the same type of paper. And I have no idea how to open this. Um, so these are my, I got like the little cheapo um, Hobby Lobby brands and I don't know how to open these. Um, I've never used paint tubes, even in my, cat get out of here. I've never even used the paint tubes, even with the watercolor experiments I've done. How do you open this? Try again. So, okay, seriously? I guess I really don't want this coming out. But I need purple. Oh. Oh, ew. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Making a mess. Making a mess. Wait. Wait. This, the, t the top, Are, the top has a little, wait, what? Are you serious? Put the top upside down. Are you kidding me? Am I this stupid? Yes, I am. I have paint. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to play with this a little bit to see what different colors I can get. Once I start getting some swatches down, I'm going to come back, let you know if I think it'll work for my backgrounds, and we're just gonna pretend this never happened. Um, yeah, so I'll see you in a few minutes. After several minutes of trying to learn how to open my paints, I eventually began the process of starting swatches. Um, I had seen people use gouache in the past, and so I had an idea of how it would behave, but I had never done so myself. I knew that straight out of the tubes, it was going to be something closer to acrylic. It was going to be the darkest the colors would be and it was going to probably have the most vibrancy and the most opaque tendency to it. And that was fine, but what I would also understood is that you add water to it and it becomes something more um, akin to watercolor itself. If the color becomes lighter with the more water you add to it, but the more um, washes you can obtain, things along those lines, it becomes kind of more faded and toned down with the more water you use, but the trade-off is, of course, it's more diff difficult to control. Anybody that's used watercolor can certainly understand that. And I included the uh, clip of my swatches in the bottom left-hand corner of the video so you guys were able to see the differences from when it was straight out of the tube on the right-hand side to as I gradually included different amount of water. I had some reservations about going forward. I know that illustrators and a lot of artists really love gouache because of the properties that it has, and I knew that this sort of thing, like the Alice in Wonderland whimsical colorful scene would be perfect for it, but I wasn't sure I was going to be able to achieve the same thing for the characters themselves. I was afraid of Alice because I don't have flesh tones, I don't have skin tones for her, how was I going to color her? I wasn't so worried about shading because from what I recall of the movie there wasn't a lot of shading so her hair was basically a yellow. Well I have yellow and the caterpillar was a bright blue so I also had several shades of blue. 
but I was afraid that she would turn out looking like a Simpsons character with bright yellow skin and bright yellow hair on top of a very bright background. Um, I decided at the very least to go ahead and pursue the background with it and go from there. And I was, wasn't sure how I was going to do that at first. I don't do a lot of painting. The only painting I've done is strictly from watercolor back in January. And so there was a lot of hesitancy because I knew that I wanted to have a very light color for the leaves and I wanted to do more detail on like the designs on the leaves and I wasn't sure how to achieve that. Um, I was very afraid of the paper itself buckling under the weight of the water because if I do a wash with watercolor, you know, if I lighten it up with water, use it as a watercolor, I was afraid the paper wouldn't handle that much. And so I eventually decided that was probably my best bet. So I really diluted the paint down with water. I got it to where it was still very colorful, but it wasn't it wasn't vibrant and in your face because I needed that to be the details on the leaves. So I went through and I did washes on all the background leaves and I basically added a little bit more paint to it once I was finished, once I had it in a manageable state where I thought that it would handle a second layer and I went through with thicker paint, something more acrylic, something more opaque, and I went over on top of it. And I really enjoyed the effect that it gave because it does give the leaves a little more pop. It looks like a different shade of green or shade of red and orange. And the pinks and purples, I was just blown away by. I love the difference that they had the more water I added versus no water at all. It just looks like completely different colors. I was in love. And so I started doing more and more. I was trying to work my way from the top down. I thought that would probably be the most beneficial and sane way to do it so that I wasn't putting my hand in the paint and I wasn't, you know, messing stuff up. And just being a perfectionist on that level, it was kind of hard to keep myself, you know, from doing everything that I wanted to do. Like I wanted to do all the orange and I wanted to do all of this, you know, the purples, but I had to hold off and say, okay, we really need to think about what goes where. I can't have too much purple touching other purple. I can't have a bunch of like red touching red. So it really made me sit and kind of look at my color wheel. And that, that was a whole fiasco because I'm not very good at pre-planning. <laughs> and I was just, I was trying to figure out, okay, I was afraid to put red next to orange because I thought they might look too similar, but eventually it just came down to the fact that I had to do something. I didn't want to use blue for the background because I wanted the blue to be for the characters. So I was just struggling, and eventually it did kind of work out. Like The colors were separated enough you could see them individually. Everything had its own unique look to it, and I was very happy with how it was coming along. Um, that is until I started doing the characters themselves. Alice, she she was simple enough. Her dress was, you know, the, the pastel blue, but I realized very quickly that I was making mistakes that I had learned not to make when I was doing my watercolor, and that's how I knew it had been too long since I'd done it. I wasn't using big enough brushes. I wasn't having enough water to move the paint, and I wasn't having enough paint on my brush, period. And it kind of came out with the first layer that I did for Alice's dress. I should have taken that for what it was the second I saw that, but I kept going. I let it dry because I figured if it's anything like watercolor, it has to completely dry before I can try to fix this. And so I moved on and I started on the caterpillar. Well, the caterpillar, I tried to improve on what I had done with Alice. I used a bigger brush, but it still wasn't big enough. I didn't have enough paint. I didn't have enough water. And so there I learned my biggest lesson is when in doubt, just use the biggest brush you have. Because if I had just used the, the, the bigger brush that I had, it would have had enough. It would have been a nice even coat, a gorgeous color, but you live and you learn. I mean, this is something I'll know not to do on my next picture. And I was able to actually correct Alice's dress. There were still some streaky marks to it, but for the most part, I, I feel like it looks solid enough. I was also ecstatic to see what I was able to do with Alice's skin tone. I didn't have much hope but I figured I would go for it anyway. I had already colored everything else in this drawing with the gouache, 
So I felt like it was almost cheating or it just wasn't going to look right if I went in and did color pencil for her. So I mixed a lot of the same colors that I had learned to use with watercolor and colored pencils to try and obtain a nice pale skin tone. Um, Disney actually kind of helped me out with that one because the, the princesses, at least the older ones, are generally very, very pale. And so I just mixed some of the yellows, some burnt sienna, a little bit I think of Venetian red, and it came out very strong. But I realized that I have titanium white. Why don't I just use white and see what happens? And all it took was a little bit of the paint from the colors to mix into that white to give me this gorgeous pale just skin tone that looked perfect for her. I almost cried. I was so excited. So when everything came together, everything was said and done, I did give it a background. I gave it a few more whimsical swirls and kind of crazy things to, you know, add to the Alice in Wonderland feel. I was so happy with how this came out. Yes, there were a few things I would probably change if I could, but I, for the first time ever using gouache, I cannot, like words cannot describe how happy I am with it. And I hope you like it too. So definitely go ahead um, and like, comment, subscribe. If you have recommendations, on how to improve with gouache, please let me know. I will be releasing videos every Saturday, so definitely keep an eye out for that and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I, have you hope, I hope you have a great week, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks!